Hey folks, uh, Seni Fakuri, aka Darth Caboose here. What is going on? Uh, I am here with our first turn of uh, Labyrinth, The Awakening. And this is our fourth campaign of the general series, but the second one for this particular expansion. Uh, we are about good to go. Um, the one key thing that I have to note is that um, I have already dealt off the starting hand of cards. <laughs> so right this time. Uh, for both players. And again, I will be playing as a Jihadist, and the United States player will be assumed by the bot. So we'll just jump straight into it. You can see the board's already set up, and we are essentially good to go. Uh, but I... I'm just going to get the little chart here opened up, and get, the, get that stuff ready, and we should be ready to go. So, uh, once again, if you've seen my previous Let's Play videos, you know that I like to have the United States player select cards from left to right. Uh, whereas for us, of course, we'll look at the entire hand and decide what we want to do. So we're up first, we have our two cards. Uh, we'll go and flip over our cards and take a look at what we have here. Okay, so, hmm, looks like we have a couple of US events that are a little precarious. Uh, but there are some really good Jihadist events too. Quagmire is playable. Oh man, that's a really good event. Because that can totally mess them up. But I also notice we have the U.S. election. And that could be bad. Because the U.S. election could potentially bring them to heart. And then, well, we'd want to get them back to soft. We could do that with Quagmire. So we have our three actions. And let's think about what we should do. Um, again, this is going to be a long campaign. This is a three-deck game. It might, it might last that long. Who knows? But... Uh, as before, the map is quite similar to before. Afghanistan's under a regime change. Iraq is not. It's an ally. That's a poor ally. And there's, of course, Pakistan as well. So for this game, we may want to try going for Pakistan. Although I know we have Malala in our hand. And we uh, would like to have that not be played. So we might end up plotting with this card. So let's go ahead and play U.S. Election for the first card. And... Um, Let's go ahead and have the event fire first. So, okay, uh, because this is an automatic event, it, it, the event happens regardless of what you use it for. So, uh, we'll go ahead and roll the U.S.'s posture. And again, rolling posture is um, just a single die roll, and it's a one to four is soft five. Or it's a one to three is soft four to six is hard. It's it's actually fifty fifty if the United States does it. We go to six, which means they're going to go hard. So, uh, the Republicans win. Obama is out of office, or possibly he elects a more he elects a bunch of Republicans to the uh, Department of, of Defense, and they sort of decide to take a harder stance. Would be a thematic explanation for it. So they go hard, and the card instruction says, uh, then if GI penalty is zero, plus one prestige; if not, minus one prestige. Now their penalty is zero, so they will gain a prestige. So we just handed over prestige on the silver platter. That's that's a shame. And we're going to go ahead and spend our three operations points to recruit three times in Afghanistan. That'll just place three cells there. And that'll be the end of that. Okay. And then, um, because we don't want them doing... So this card is used. It's discarded. Uh, it should be in the discard pile, as you can see. And, okay. So for our second card, uh, we're going to counteract the hard nature of the United States by playing Quagmire. And it says, play if prestige medium or low... And a redeemed change country has a cell. That is the case. The U.S.'s prestige is medium, although it was quite close to high. Uh, thankfully, we're smart and played this ahead of time. And um, we'll play the event. So, uh, U.S. randomly discards two cards, and then any playable jihadist events on them happen. And then the U.S.'s prestige goes to stuff. So I'm going to leave this card here uh, while we do that. So we're going to go ahead and take the U.S.'s hand, and we'll flip the first card. So Day of Rage, that's not a Jihadist card, so that card's just discarded. But I guess we get to see what it is. Next up is Reaper. Nice. That's an event they can't play, so... Uh, I mean, that's an event that they won't be able to play, so we'll discard that too. And then the next thing is... So none of those were Jihadist events, so... Oh, well, could have been better. We'll flip that over to Soft, and they are now back to Soft. So it looks like those Republicans are... Were ousted by popular opinion. Alright, not bad. Great, great first, uh, great first uh, action phase. Well, it's now the United States' turn, so we're gonna flip over the card. ISIL. Okay, so uh, 
we'll go ahead and whoops, consult our bot chart here. And so uh, because there are no plots on the map yet, we can skip over the ARF section and just jump straight into the post alert resolution flowchart. And so if you remember from the third campaign, the very first thing you always ask is, is reassessment possible? And reassessment is possible typically if only you only ask this question in the first card of the action phase. So if it's the second card, you don't have to worry about it. And if the card is the three ops card, you can kind of see this all down here. Then you also have to ask, is the U.S.'s reserves at two, and do they have another card in their hand? And then finally, and this is probably the most important because this, sort of, this is sort of how the United States determines whether or not they should flip. Um, is the U.S. soft and is the Islamists close to getting the resources they need to win the game? Or is the U.S. hard and the world is soft at three and there's no Islamist real countries? So that's pretty cool. Um, but in this case, although the card is a three ops card and is the first action phase, uh, they do not meet that third requirement because uh, while they are soft, we only have zero countries available. So, yeah. So this is going to be a three ops card, so reassessment is not possible. We go on to no. Is this a playable non-jihadist card? No, it is a playable jihadist card. So, we go to no. Uh, that means they're going to ignore the event and use the thing for... Um, they're going to use the card for many things here. Alright, so disrupt and poor Muslim at cells... Uh, cells minus cubes greater than or equal to 2. Um, okay, so the only countries that have cells are Iraq, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. They can't disrupt in Pakistan because um, because that it's not an ally. So, no, they can't do it there. Afghanistan doesn't meet that because uh, cells minus cubes is negative 1, and that's not greater than or equal to 2. And then Iraq is the same story. So, no. Next up is, are there Islamist rule, is, is Islamist resources greater than or equal to 3? No, they're not. Uh, can they do a war of idea and Muslim with DRM greater than or equal to 0? I don't think so. Uh, the closest they can get to is Algeria, because the Awakening marker, and this is a Awakening uh, Labyrinth, the Awakening mechanic, does increase the war of ideas modifier by 1, but they're still at a minus 2 because of the DWAT relations, so uh, at best they can get minus 1. So, no, they, they can't do it at 0. Okay, so we skip that over. Uh, okay, so no. Uh, is prestige low? No, their prestige is medium. So, no. Regime change possible? Uh, no, they can't because there there are no Islamist rule countries to perform regime change. Uh, Alright. Disrupt for plus one prestige or to place cadre? Well, yes, they can disrupt because they have the ops to do so. So I think they will end up doing the disrupt. So we go over here to disrupt and we kind of see this is actually very similar to what you have here, right? And it even follows that same order. So, poor Muslim with cells minus cubes are equal to two, and then four plus one prestige. And then there's there are like um, these. So like th there's two possibilities, right? There's the Iraq and there's Afghanistan, right? So which one do they pick? Um, because both of those give plus one prestige. And it looks like so there none of those countries are these four. Like these three are important because of the nuclear arsenal. And but Philippines is important because of Abu Sayyaf, but that's not in effect right now. Uh, good, fair, poor, they're both poor, so we tie there. And then besiege regime. And then, so none of them are besiege regime. And then we have most cells. I, I would think regime change would be a factor there, but maybe not. Okay, so they're going to spend the three ops to do a disrupt in Afghanistan. And this guy is discarded, and this, these two cells are flippity flip flipped to the active side, and they gain a prestige for their troubles. So now they're in the high prestige. Which is good, that, that means they can actually start working on Algeria. Alright, so that was their first card, let's just finish through here. Uh, disrupt -up -up. So that was all three of the operations points, and that's pretty much it. If there were any remaining, like if, 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 uh, if they had a three ops they decided to do something in a two ops place, or, sorry, if they had three operations points and they did something in a fair or a good country, then the remaining ops would be used for Homeland Security. But not in this case, because they did actually spend all their ops. So that was our first card. Our second card is going to be... It's going to be... Arab Winter! Alright. Uh, let's see here. So, um, no plot, so we skip over the alert section. No reassessing. Is this a playable non-jihadist? Uh, no, it's a jihadist card, so we just say no. And then we ask the same questions again. 
Uh, disrupt and poor Muslim, it sells minus Q3 equal to 2? No. Um, they only have two ops, so they can't do it in there. Uh, Islamist rule with Guerin equal to 3 and RC possible? No. War, and I War if ideas in Muslim with DRM greater equal to 0? So yes, that would be the case because they have the plus 1, minus 2, plus 1 that comes up to 0. But they can't target Algeria because they don't have the ops to do so. So, uh, pretty sure no. Yeah. This is at a minus one. Yeah, they're all at a minus one, so no. Alright. So, no. Prestige low? No, prestige is high. Redeem should be possible? No. Disrupt for plus one prestige? No, they can't do that. Is the deploy possible? Well, yes, they could technically deploy. Hmm. Interesting. So, how does one evaluate whether a deploy is possible or not? Is there something in the rules about that up here? U.S. card play. Deploy, 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 deploy. I mean, they could technically deploy. All right. Well, let's let's see what happens here. Uh, okay. So, Philippines. Nope. Ally Muslim with cells and without cubes. Uh, none of the countries meet that requirement because there's only cells in these three and they already have cubes. Troop track. Okay, so they're going to go to the troop track. Deploy from Philippines of Murotox. Islamist rule. So, no, Murotox is, is not in effect. Islamist rule. No Islamist rule countries. Good, then fair ally without cells. Without cells or without NATO and or security forces. Okay. Uh, right. So that would be the Gulf States. Okay. So they're going to spend their two ops, they're going to spend this card to redeploy the troops from the Gulf States back to the um, to the troop track. Interesting. Alright. So they will do that. These guys go up there. I don't, I don't know if I would do something like that personally, but there you go. And that happens because we got all the way to here to deploy possible. And yeah, they can deploy. We concluded that they'll de deploy to the troop track. And they will deploy from that. And that works out. Okay. Uh, if this would deploy... But you'll notice down here if um, if this would deploy to troop track from troop track. Instead you go back up to the, the par and you proceed from there. Alright, that's fair. Now, notice that um, deploying from... Anywhere to the troop track is only one operation point. So technically, they have a single op point left. And with that op point, they will do homeland security. That's cool. This is the first time we've done this this, this series. So let's see how this goes. Okay, so they have one op left. With all unused ops, disrupt in the U.S. if sell or cadre. There are none there. If U.S. is hard, and do a penalty. Well, so they're not hard. They're soft. So we skip that. Um... Disrupt in a non-Muslim closest to U.S. Ties most cells. Uh, there are no cells in non-Muslim countries, so we skip that. Add any remaining ops to reserves. Okay, so, so they're going to add this one operations point to reserves. And if there were any more ops, if reserves were full and ops remain, disrupt in Muslim as a cadre close to the U.S. And then probably the... Craziest is Warf idea in a non-Muslim with opposite posture, if none of them are. So, yeah, if if it came to the par where it's like they can do that, then that would be impressive. Anyway, so yeah, Homeland Security is done. This card is used up, and it is off to this card pile of you. And let me just make sure I didn't play any. Yeah, they're they're all good. Oh yeah, Quagmire is an old card. Is there any changes to it? No, Quagmire is the exact same card as before. So, no changes there. Alright, so that was the end of the full round. Uh, that was both of their cards, so it's back over to us. With our two cards. Copycat. Play if a plot was resolved in the last action phase. Ooh. That could be really good if it happens. Alright, so I'd like to hit the US's Seal Team 6, I think this card works where it's like, uh, let's see, Seal Team 6. 
Yeah, this draw card from Jihad's vest. So, so we want if we play this card last, it, it has no negative impact. We're gonna go ahead and play Malala Yusuf for a plot. So this will be the card we plot with this game. Uh, this turn, so the event does not fire. It's our way of negating a bad card. And we're gonna go ahead and plot twice in Afghanistan. So, uh, alright, so we're doing a double plot. We're gonna flip two guys over. The constantly these guys are already flipped over. We roll to die. We got a four and a three. Okay, so four and a three, that means one of them is a success, success because the country is a poor, so that works out. Uh, we can only, however, place a maximum of a two ops card, two plot value card in the country. So we're gonna draw a specific, we're gonna draw a plot two, and just leave that face up because, again, it's the bot, right? Uh, there might be some value to making the one. I don't know. All right, so that was the two plot card, uh, and that is the end of Malala Yusuf, or the usage of that card, I should say. Um, smartphones is a little funky because it's a nice way of getting awakening markers into countries, but at the same time, it allows the play of Facebook, which is a very very dangerous event, so you typically don't want to have that happen. Uh, I do. I could, I could spend a one op point to do something though, or I could spend a three ops point to do something even more. Um, more recruiting, or we could do some traveling. That might be a good idea. Uh, I can only recruit up to two, so um, yeah, let's let's do it slow. I'm gonna go ahead and play smartphones for a single op point. Um, and I'm going to recruit... I'm actually going to travel. I think traveling is probably the best. So we're going to go ahead and put this guy to sleep and send them off to Pakistan. Just get some guys over there. Get that going. Get that rolling. Alright, that's our two That's our two cards. Uh, again, uh, kind of weak, but that typically happens when you have a very slow turn. Okay. Let's go ahead and... Uh, that was our two cards. Sorry, it's... What am I saying? Whenever you have a hand that consists of very low operation point cards, you want to value the events a bit more. And... I mean... Even if you're a point... Like, even a hand full of, like, US 3 op cards is better than 1 op cards because you can actually do a lot of stuff with those operation points. Anyway, enough blobbing about strategy. Let's go ahead and go on to the, uh... Ebola scare! Oh, man. All right, so there is a there is a nefarious plot on the board, so we must consult our uh, well, not our their alert resolution flowchart. Start here. Is the WND place in the country? No. Are there three ops available? Well, they have uh, one reserves and one from the card, so no. Okay, is the card a playable non-jihadist card? Playable non. Yes, yes it is. It's a playable non jihadist card. So we go to the par flow chart. Alright. So they're just gonna kinda go to the par flow chart. So uh reassessment possible? Nope. We don't have to ask that question. Uh possible non jihad playable non jihadist? So I mean that's the same question as that, and the answer is Yes, it is a playable non jihadist. So they're gonna play the event. Okay. If US play Remove one troop from track first to the off map until end of next draw phase. So after the draw phase is done, they will do this. So this guy goes over here. Uh, plus two prestige. So essentially they're sending troops out to uh, handle the Ebola crisis that racked much of... I think it was West Africa, right? Yeah, I think it was West Africa. I'm wondering if it's East or West Africa. It's, it's actually West Africa. I like library of those countries over there. Okay, so that's the one-op card. What happens next? Uh, okay, play event. Is it unassociated? Yes. Add card value to reserves. So they're going to get themselves two reserves. So that is another reserve, bringing up the two. So this is lapsing and removes. This is sent it out of play. We'll just have to keep track of the off-map forces at the end of the turn. All right, that was their first card. So we'll just move that up. Their second card is going to be Bin Laden. 
Oh no. That's really bad. So uh this is a difference between Bin Laden here and then the base game. And this and the in and Labyrinth the War on Terror, Bin Laden you have to actually meet some requirements if there are no Islamist countries and uh, Fatah isn't the van in, in play, and Anbar isn't in play, and then you can actually capture Bin Laden. Here, though, it is after these events, so he's actually just open. Uh, it seems like the United States has just caught him, which is unfortunate. But, 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 actually, before I get ahead of myself, um, there is a plot on the board, so the United States may actually consider removing the plot. Let's see what happens here. So we start here. There's a WMD placed in the country. Uh... No. Actually, I was just I was just thinking real quickly. So, and yeah, so it does that. And that's probably the end of that, right? If they if they add stuff to reserves, that means they're not planning on using any more ops. So that would make sense. Okay. So, no, no we're good. All right. So, Bin Laden, so um let's go back here. So, no, are there three ops available? Yes, the Bin Laden card is that. Okay. Is this the last card of the phase or US reserves less than equal to two, less than 2? No, it's not. Last card of the phase. It's not the last card of the phase. And the US Reserve is at 2. So it's a no for that and a no for that. Man, I, I know this is a very simple or statement, but I look at this and I'm like, am I sure I'm doing this right? So the answer to this is no. Yep. So, uh, next question is, are there multiple plots? No. Then we go to the par flow chart. Dang. <laughs> oh well, yeah. If if it, if if reserves was less than two, then they would be concerned. Oh wait, last card of the phase. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's phase. I, I I'm confusing phase with turn. So yes, this is the last card of the phase. So they are actually going to go to the alert table. That makes sense. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Just gotta English. Do you speak it? I guess I do. All right. So there's only one plot. So let's go ahead and evaluate here. Uh, let's see, Prestige is at 9, and Funding is at 5. Yeah, so 9, 5. So Prestige 9, Funding 5. But we have to modify it a little bit. Let's we'll look over here. Uh, other unresolved plots, nope. Low posture, nope. Slums, nope. Pirates, nope. Action, never mind. So it's just going to be a straight up 9, 5. Okay, so 9, 5. So we look at this little box here. This is happening in a Muslim country, Afghanistan. So uh, we consult the left side of the dash, which is an R. An R means roll a die. Subtract one from roll for each aid of a plot, and then alert if the result is less than or equal to the plot number. So if it's a if it's a one or a two, because it's a two value plot, they'll alert it. So let's go ahead and roll a die here. They got a two. Alright. So a two is less than or equal to two, which means they will they will spend the three ops card to alert the plot. And Honestly, I am so happy that they did that. <laughs> Let me just double check Bin Laden. Okay, so he's not actually listed here. Right? So we alert, and that's it. We're not doing anything else. Pretty sure we're not. Okay. Alright, so Bin Laden is thankfully not played. And uh, the plot is alerted. Boo-hoo. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, the change of the rules in the Awakening, which I did catch last time, is every time a plot happens or is resolved or whatever, it is used up for the turn, the, the hand of cards. So you can only really ever place a maximum of six plots per turn, which makes sense. That's fine. Okay, so the plot is... Bin Laden is not cut because of a nefarious plot in Afghanistan, but it doesn't resolve, so that's the end of that. Over to us. So copycat will probably not be used, but they do have two in reserves, which is great, because Cyber Warfare is a great card for disrupting that. We're going to play Cyber Warfare for the event, set your opponent's reserves to zero, and then take the reserves from them. Blah ha ha ha. So that was our first card. Our second card is going to be to combine our reserves, our newly gained reserves, with a one op card to, for a total of three. And we are going to 
Again, that's a little bit awkward because I would like to get some more guys out. We're going to go ahead and um, send two more dudes over to Pakistan. Two more dudes. Dude. All right. Uh, oh, we can actually travel one more. Um, I mean, they're, they're good there. I could send one over to Central Asia. Let's do that. All right. Central Asia. So we'll go ahead and test the gov test the governance there. It's a fair country. Whoops. <laughs> All right, and we're good to go. Maybe I should have sent to Pakistan just as a buffer. Oh well. Living and learning. It's too late. I already rolled the die. Okay, that's our two cards. It's over to the U.S. with their last two cards. Uh, Tahrir Square. Ooh. Oh man, that's a really good event for them. All right. Uh, place two Awakening and one Reaction Marker in Egypt. And one Awakening Marker in any other country which does not already have one. Okay, so, um, this is a playable, uh, so, I mean, there are no alert, there are no plot, there are no plots, so we skip that. Uh, they can't reassess, so we skip that. Um, yeah. Uh, playable non-jihadist? Uh, yes? Ooh, doorbell. Uh, we're almost done. So, playable on Jihadist, yes. So we play the event. Okay, so place two Awakening and one Reaction Marker in Egypt. Do we test Egypt? Doesn't say to do so. Huh. Let's check out the rules here. Alright, sorry folks, one sec. Alright, sorry about that folks, uh, mail call, if you know what I mean. Actually, there is no other way to interpret that, it is a mail call. Alright, so, um, where were we? So, Tahrir Square, okay, so, um, is there a listing here? I don't think there, there is. There's just Hezib at Tahrir. But yeah, that's fine. Okay, so I guess the event does happen. Now, it doesn't say... If you should test Egypt, I'm going to implicitly assume that you do. Um, please let me know if this is correct or not, but let's go ahead and do it. So we'll test the country, uh, roll the die, it's a poor two. So this guy's going to get two awakening markers. That's really good for the US. Uh, so we'll flip this over, that becomes a plus two. And then a single reaction marker, so there's this uh, pro democratic uh, movement that's overswelling the pro-reactionary movement. And then one awakening marker in any other country which does not already have one. Okay, now, that's a little tricky. Where is that Where is that marker going to go? I think if we look at the rules up here, it says, okay, when an event instructs to... Let's see, placing moving markers. Okay, U.S. spot always places awakening markers and moves reaction markers. When placing aid or awakening markers... The U.S. spot uses the War of Idea Muslims Priority Box. Okay. Alright, so we're, we'll consult the War of Ideas Priorities Box, and we'll go from there. Okay, so here we go. Lowest number of plot die. That's all the countries. Regime change. Makes sense! Alright, so one of those is going to go into a regime change country. It's probably going to be Afghanistan. So one awakening marker is placed in Afghanistan. Wait, hang on. 
Regime change. Right. Not besiege regime. <laughs> okay. Great. So that's a little unfortunate for us. But there you go. So that was our first card. It's a really good card, by the way. Their second card is going to be change of state. Okay, so this is a, uh, again, no plots. They can't reassess. So playable non-jihadist. No. So this is a jihadist card. So it doesn't happen, but uh, they do have two ops to potentially play with. Uh, okay. Disrupt in poor Muslim at cells minus cubes. Nope. Can't do that. Islam is true. Nope. Or if idea and Muslim with DRM greater than equal to zero, I think they can now. Yeah, I think they can. Although it is only two op points, so a little tricky there. Let's see. Um, so they can only target Central Asia, Pakistan, and Gulf states. I assume they don't target unmarked countries. So um, the modifiers in all these countries is at a minus one because they're at plus two. So that minus two of the G watt plus one from prestige. Very close to plus two, but not quite there yet. Alright. So no. They can't do that. Prestige is low? Nope. It's high. Redeem change possible? Nope. Disrupt for plus one prestige or to place cadre? Uh, no, they can't disrupt in the two co in the fair countries because they're not allies and there are no cells in the Gulf states. So no. Deploy possible? Yeah, it could be. Um, they have troops to deploy with. That's, that's weird, like, this could almost always be seen as a yes, right? Anyway, let's see how this goes. Deploy two. Uh, let's see here. Allied Muslim with cells but no troops. Nope. Troops track. Okay, so we'll say troops track. Deploy from... Nope, nope. Good than fair ally without cells and or NATO. Okay. At basically, if it's a good without, yeah. So, yeah. None of the countries meet that requirement. So it ends up with troop pack. So when you do from to troop pack, from troop pack, you basically go back to the par. So we essentially say no and we proceed. Or if I did Muslim with DRM of minus one. Yes, that is possible. They're, they can do a war if I did in a country at a, at a minus one. So um, where do they do it? Well, Pretty sure Pakistan is high up here. Let's see here. Or if idea Muslim, lowest number of plot dice, redeem change. They can't do redeem change. Actually, they could. Oh, yeah, I didn't realize that. Oops. We'll have to do some recruiting, and I've got to fix that. Um, but they can't do that there because they need three ops, and it's only two. So, no. Uh, so, redeem change, caliphate capital, Pakistan. So, it's going to be Pakistan that they try their war of ideas. And this is going to be at a minus one. So we'll go ahead and spend this card and roll the bones. We're going to get a three. That's not a success. Uh, at a minus one, they need to get a six. A five would place an aid. So this is just a, a failure. And we're happy. That's good. That's great. Um, all right. Our turn. Last two cards of the round. Uh... I wish I could hold on to these cards, but alas. Jihadist videos would be a great way of spreading out. But, um... We should... I want to I want to use this for recruiting. This could be used for Jihad. It's not too unreasonable. But I would prefer to plot, because that does kind of double duty. Alright, let's go ahead and spend three ops points to plot with. We're going to plot twice in Pakistan. So this guy, these two flip over, and once in Afghanistan. Alright, so uh, we'll do three die. The first one will be for pa Afghanistan, the next two will be for... Sorry. The first one will be for Afghanistan, the next two will be for Pakistan. So we'll roll the die. Wow, one, one, four. Excellent. So that was a three ops card. Uh, that was So we're going to put the three plot... Um, let's see here. Draw specific... We'll put the three in Pakistan, and we will put the, well, put the two, may as well, in Afghanistan. Yep, that works. And then, with our last two ops, this card is played, the event does fire, but, um, 
it 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 would typically draw a random card from your opponent's hand, but this is the last card, so you're smart. This card does nothing. We're gonna recruit twice in Afghanistan to shore up what little we have there. <laughs> Alright, so that's the end of that. The United States' turn happens, but they have no cards left, which is great, which means our plots will go off. <laughs> Alright, so what happens here? Um, so first of all, this plot goes off here. Um, they lose a prestige because they have troops there. And we gain a funding. Very important. Um, let me double check something real quickly. Uh, I'm just going to look up the word plot. Yeah, so the awakening markers don't affect plots in any way. But do successful plots... Let's see if I can find the term successful plot. <laughs> nope. All right. I'm pretty sure there is no way of removing awakening markers easily, except by um. Yeah, only when it enters or loses that. Okay, that's fine. So this guy is used up. He goes back. This guy happens. That's going to be another uh, funding. No prestige loss because there are no troops there. And we're going to roll three die, and each success or less, will degrade the governance one level. So we'll hope we get lucky here. Or we get at least one. That's good enough. That degrades the governance to poor. Great. Okay, so this is the end of the round. We can put all these plots back. No problem. Uh, make sure they're all there. Yep, 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 they are. And just double checking to make sure. Yep, I think that's all good. Okay. So... Uh, the governance degraded. We got our funding. That's great. Um, it is the end of the round, so we need to do the end of turn stuff here. So first up, jihadists lose the funding. It's a shame because we're back down to moderate. Uh, U.S. loses the prestige if there there are no Islamist world countries, so they don't they don't gain a prestige though because they're soft and the world isn't hard. Reserves to zero. Well, U.S. ignores that part when you're playing against the bot. Return plus is available. That's done. And then we do conduct po conduct polarization. So this is a sort of nation by nation census of all the awakening and reaction markers. Uh, at best, there's only three countries at plus one. That's uh, Algeria, Egypt, plus two minus one. That's plus one. And Afghanistan plus one. Uh, a result of plus one means uh, no effect occurs. So it stays the same, which is fine. Um, yeah, so that's that. So that's polarization. We would also conduct attrition in civil war countries, but there are no civil war countries, so we can skip that part. And then we do a new, we do a new hand. Uh, once a new hand is dealt, we'll return the troop to until end of next draw phase. Right? We'll do it right now. It's inconsequential. But they're gonna, we're both gonna draw eight cards each. Remove lapsing events. This she is removed. Discarded, not removed. Uh, turn off map forces the track. Regime change the tan. Okay, so we'll do the egg cards eat each, and that'll be the end of this turn. Eight for the US, and eight for the nefarious jihadists. Wahahaha. Alright, folks. That is the end of turn one of our Let's Play Labyrinth the Awakening, fourth campaign, and uh, pretty tame start. You know, got the U.S.'s prestige is increasing slowly. It was at medium, and it skyrocketed to high. Uh, our very lucky plot placement in Afghanistan stopped Bin Laden from being caught. That's kind of thematic. It's also kind of weird. I would honestly think if I was in the position that uh, the U.S. was in, I would have just let the plot go, go off, taken the prestige hit, and captured Bin Laden. Because what is that? I think I think Bin Laden is a... Where is he? Yeah. I'm, okay, so you lose the prestige, but you ding them for funding. That's a huge deal. That would bottom me out to tight. Oh, well. Soviet. But I mean, that's just the way it's that's just the way it's structured, right? Yeah. 
Uh, I'm pretty sure we did everything right. Uh, convergence didn't happen. We have to keep track of that. We also have to keep track of anything that happens in the um, well, Civil War stuff. Well, that hasn't happened yet. Uh, we have to keep track of anything that might happen in um, uh, the M Mali or Nigeria. Nigeria is the funky one, if you remember that. But that hasn't happened yet. Okay, great. So that is going to be the end of turn one. Um, and yeah, we'll see how this goes. So far it looks to be the start. Uh, I think it's pretty standard opening for us. Moving stuff to Pakistan, trying to get that under control, trying to get those WMDs in our, in our pocket. And going from there. Alright, well, thank you all so much for watching. Again, my name is Sunny Fakhoury, aka Dark Goose, and you have been watching our first turn of Let's Play Labyrinth The Awakening. I'll see you all in the next video, turn two. Stay tuned. See you all later.